What I am saying is we need a government which is democratically accountable to our citizens. And what I'm saying is that the concentration of wealth today means that government is not serving the public good. It's serving special interests. That's the problem, and that's a democratic problem. So, and I would, and I would add to that, Newt, that I don't think you're against government. I think no. you're in favor of government. Yeah. But you're in favor of government for very specific interests, for big business. I'm in favor of government that will serve the people and the public good. And uh, I'm not against the yeah, markets. I just yeah. want to make sure that I, the I, markets I, also serve basic principles. Okay. But Mr. Aren't Prime Minister, no one on disagrees with you on that. Everyone I'm wants glad. government to serve the people. It's just, are we wanting to them to raise tax rates? The answer to that is that doesn't serve the people. Raising tax rates is not the way to go to have government serve the people better. Creating prosperity is. Getting revenues is. Having tax reform, which is exactly what you talked about. We need a broad-based tax without all these loopholes, all these deductions, exemptions, and exclusions, and lower rates. This is the whole principle behind Simpson Bowles. We did this in the 86 Tax Act. Now, what did we do in the 86 Tax Act? You talk about politics. We lowered the highest income tax rate in the United States from 50% to 28%. We raised the lowest rate from 12.5% to 15. We cut the number of brackets from 14 to 4. We dropped the corporate rate from 46% to 34%. And the vote in the Senate? 97 to 3 in favor of it, including Alan Cranston, and Mr. Lefty Wefty, including my neighbor and great friend Al Gore, including Bill Bradley, including Teddy Kennedy, including Joe Biden, including Chris Dodd, including all of these guys, Howard Metzenbaum, including Barbara, they all voted for it because they know it's the right thing to do to create growth and to get the revenues for government and to reduce the need of spending. You know, and, well, people okay, who are unemployed. And there have been, let's, by let's, the way, there have uh, been bring elaborate, Paul back careful economic studies of the 86 tax reform, which, by the way, it was widely admired. The 80, I, I particularly do believe that, uh, that equalizing the, the tax rate on capital gains, you know, on, on different forms of income is the right way to go. Yes, it is. Uh, however, there have been many studies <laughs> attempting to identify the effect of that tax reform on the rate of growth of U.S. productivity, U.S. potential output. They haven't found a damn thing. Oh, of course It's they just have. not visible. <laughs> it's just not visible. If it's that important, all the Feldstein how could you work on this, Paul, if it has shown the effects on the 86 tax act? Very clearly by following the same cohorts using IRS data. Just if you look true. at all of these, Gentlemen, and well, they're just let's, the uh, let's, something. We, we need to step outside and throw spreadsheets at each other. I'll, I'll yeah. Yeah. <laughs>